Hello everybody and welcome to Aussie's Twitter Takeover. Aussie's alongside me here at Goodison Park. If you want to ask him a question, the hashtag is Ask Aussie. It's as simple as that. We'll go through your questions. We'll be here for about half an hour or so. It's all building up, of course, to Aussie's testimonial game here at Goodison Park on Sunday afternoon against FC Porto. We'll give you ticket details a little bit later on. Let's not hang about Aussie. Let's get straight in to the questions. Matty Riley. Starts off with a tough one. In your opinion, what has been your best game for Everton? Been a few, hasn't there? <coughs> oh, it's, a, it's a tough question. Um, off the top of my head, uh, well, are you judging it best performance or most enjoyable game? I think we'll have, we'll pick a couple. You've always liked playing at Villa Park, haven't you? I have, yeah. Um, going back to reserve days when I, I was scoring a couple of goals there, but uh, I'd have to say. Uh, you know, one of the first time we played there when we won three uh, one many years ago. Now that was uh, one of the most enjoyable days. Was sure. that two thousand and four five? It was, yeah. Um, I scored two. Tim Cale scored one. Mm. Um, that was a, a real, real enjoyable game. I don't know if it was me, me best performance, but uh, it was up there with with most enjoyable. Somebody tweeted the other day when I asked them for your. For their favourite Aussie memories, your performance against Fiorentina here at Goodison Park. It often gets overlooked because ultimately we went out of the UEFA Cup on penalties, but uh, one of the supporters said you were here, there and everywhere and, and kept the team going. Do you recall much about that game? I just remember the uh, the momentum we needed and, mm. and you know everything was, uh, was electric <coughs> that night that the crowd was and um, the, the players were all up for it and you know, I do have memories of running around like a madman trying to, <laughs> trying to trying to you know take the team forward, and you know it wasn't just me doing that that night. There was there was eleven of us, and um, you know it, it was surprising that we we didn't actually win the game outright in that day, and then we're um, unlucky to to lose the tie penalties. When it went to two 0 I really thought there was only going to be one winner. I did myself. Um, you know, we were certainly in the ascendancy, mm. and the crowd was was right behind us, and they were wobbling. Um, we had a few more chances, and you know they managed to hold out some extra time. And I, I think once they done that, they, they they gained a bit of confidence. And you know I think everyone who was there would remember that they were basically holding out from penalties from from that moment onwards. Yeah. You know they, they had no ambition to score a goal, um, but you know they they ended up getting the job done, which was which very disappointing for us. Danny Bostock, if you had the choice of one next season, would you select the FA Cup or the Champions League qualification? Personally, the FA Cup. Um, you know, we need to we need to bring silverware back to the club. Um, you know, that be be you know the, the first port of call. Champions League qualification would be would be amazing. You know, to, to go and compete in that competition. But for starters, we want to we want to bring some silverware back to back to Goodison and back to these fans. And um, you know, I think everyone remembers from the last couple of times we've been to Wembley. The the great occasions, <coughs> good days out, good memories to to mm. take hold of, take home. Um, you know, if we could, if we could have their memories, you know, with a cup involved, that'd be better. Fantastic! I know you like your movies, Ozzy. Dean Raymond, what's your favourite <laughs> film? My favourite film? Uh, that's an easy one for me. Um, Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> what to well, know, Number one, Back to the Future one. Uh, fell in love with it as a kid, and you know, if, we, if it's on now, no matter how many times you've seen it, if it's on the telly, you like get excited. Kids, kids, come on. <laughs> Back to the Future's on. There you go, Dean. Back to the Future. Ali, who's the best player you've played with? Another tough one. Yeah, because there's been some incredible players uh, that have played here. But you know, I'll, you know, if, if we're talking defensively or attacking wise skill, um, you know, it would all be it would all be different answers. Mm -hmm. All round player would be a different answer. But I tend to answer this with the player who's affected the game most uh, when he was on the pitch at both ends of the pitch. You know, he wasn't the the best technically or tallest, best at you know. He, he was good at a lot of things, but he affected the game at both ends on a weekly basis. And that was Tim Cahill, so I, I tend to, to lean towards him. And a big game player as well, Tim Cahill. Andy P, something similar, regardless of era. Which past Everton player would you have back at Goodison Park, and why? I think that's an easy one as well. D I Dixie Dean. Be Dixie Dean, yeah. <laughs> Anyone that can guarantee so, yeah. you sixty goals a season to do for me. Yeah, scoring <laughs> goals whether you you know you pass to him or not, he'll go and make his own goals and you know, we could get someone with his um with his record. You know, we've we've paid a lot of money for a new guy who yeah. you know, by all by all accounts looks like he, he could be the real deal, but um, you know, 
if we were choosing anyone, it'd be it'd have to be Dixie. Have to be Dean, Dixie. Yeah. Sixty goals with a big heavy case ball. Goodness knows how many you'd score with this beach ball you play with now. Um, Jess, what's your favourite song at the moment? Says Jess. Um, I'm I'm not massively into songs. I do like um, the kids have got me into uh, Pharrell, Pharrell Williams. Oh yeah, yeah young thing, young uh, young music. I'm getting involved <laughs> in now. Uh, but I do like they've had me listening to uh, Ella Henderson's new song, The Young Girl of X Factor. Can't remember how it goes, uh, but you've got to listen to that lately, and that's that's quite catchy. There you go, Jake Bradford. Sounds like an old fella, there, don't yeah. I? It's quite catchy that song. I thought you were going to mention some of your <laughs> town favourites that you, you tend to belt out at <laughs> people's weddings and christenings. Uh, Jake Bradford, thanks for your question, Jake. Do you think it's been a good summer for Everton with the signings we've made? <clears throat> of course, um, you know not just the ones we've uh, we've we've paid big money for. You know the you know we, we've re-signed Gaz Barry. We've got. Um, Ross and, uh, and Seamus to commit commit long term futures to the club and as I've just mentioned we've we've signed some some top quality players so you know I'm, I'll be surprised if the manager's finished as well um, you know I, I can't tell you either way personally but <laughs> you know it wouldn't surprise me if he was after a, a, another player or two so you know I think it's been it's been a good summer here. Keep your questions coming by the way we'll be here for another twenty minutes or so the hashtag is Ask Aussie. Any questions that you want to ask on? Man of the moment here at Everton, Leon Osman. Wolfie, have you stopped grinning yet now that Rom is back? For someone who's got a testimonial on Sunday, it was a timely transfer, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah. <clears throat> it was good timing to, to get him back. I'm, I'm really excited he's back before before my testimony on Sunday and he can um, take part in some in some way or another. Um, but, you know, he's he was a top quality player for us last season and for us to keep keep our momentum going on the field, we need to keep holding and strengthen. Um, and, you know, we've we've paid a lot of money to get him back, but uh, you know, I think it's worth it. Michael Cox Smith, and I'm sure Michael's not the only person to ask this question. We get a penalty on Sunday in your testimonial, <laughs> Tony Hibbert. <laughs> Most probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be on free kicks and yeah. everything, doesn't he, with a 30 yard radius? Well, he'll, he'll be. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think he wants me to, to score. I, th- I had a conversation with him and he said, if I've scored already, he'll, he'll at least step up and have a go. <laughs> but uh, he wouldn't feel right if I hadn't. So uh, I think I'd be more comfortable if he stepped up and had a go, especially all free kicks. Question from Oliver What do you think about the new signing, Mohamed Bezis? What can he add to the team? Well, from from what we've seen in training so far, um, he's technically very good. I think reports I heard before he arrived was that he was a, a physical player and, and he got about the pitch and, and destroyed um, opposition's attacks. But he's come in and, and showed a real a real touch and technique on the ball as well. And you know, I think I think he'll fit nicely into our into our midfield. I think I think last season there was a lot asked of, of Gaz Barry and and James McCarthy. Uh, you know, and with extra games we. We're going to have this year. It was it. It would have been too much, and uh, the managers, you know, seen that and brought in another player in that area. And, and we've got Darren Gibson to come back. So, uh, you know, I think we're we're getting quite strong all over the field. Plenty of competition, certainly in the <coughs> midfield area. Kev Rusco, it's lunchtime, says Kev. Thanks very much. What's your favourite lunchtime meal? <laughs> if the camera pans out, there's an array of chicken <laughs> on this table here, especially shipped in for Leon Osman. It's all healthy, Gaffer. Don't worry. Uh, we just had the. Uh, just had chicken there, didn't we, uh, for lunch? And you've got to eat healthily, haven't you? Yeah, you've you've, you've got to. You know, it's it's probably roasted, and you know, it's <clears throat> the best way it can possibly might be made. But um, yeah, I do like chicken and rice. I must admit. Uh, James is asking, what would you say has been your best goal? James thinks it's either the Manchester City one or the Larissa one. There's there's two Manchester City ones actually, isn't there? Not many people out jump Vincent Company, for example. Yeah, I don't remember much of that. No, no. With the uh, the clatter I took after it, um, I think it's difficult. That uh, best goal, the the Larissa goal, uh, one one goal of the season. Yeah. So you know that's that's always going to be up there. That was a fantastic move as well as a fantastic finish, wasn't it? It was. Uh, you know, we moved the ball around the pitch at, at speed, and you know the way Stevie P back heeled it in, into my path. You know, made it um, look even better. Um, you know that's. I think every goal I've scored for for Everton is is a favourite goal for me. You know whether it's a, a tap in or a 
or, or, a, or a long distance goal or, or whatever you know I, I've enjoyed every every one of my goals One of your most forgotten goals which is also I think one of your best is the one at Macclesfield in the FA Cup because everybody thinks about beating Liverpool and beating Middlesbrough and beating Aston Villa and beating Manchester United but that's where it all began wasn't it that was that was a crucial goal because we weren't exactly pulling up trees that day were we? No uh, we weren't and you know it was, it was a very difficult game for us mm-hmm. the game was only just uh, ruled on on the day because of the frozen pitch and it was it was it was really difficult conditions and um, you know we we started well, albeit we were uh, probably were not our best on the day. But uh, you know I managed to, to get that goal and I think it was uh, uh, it was an important goal to start our FA Cup run that year and um, you know yeah I'm, I'm glad I scored. Daniel Davidson, let's hope the rest of the first team are watching this one. Daniel Davidson, who's the worst dressed player for Everton and who's the best dressed? Oh. Um, Current worst dressed. Um, I don't know to be honest. Two seasons ago, the worst dress would have been easy. Oh, wouldn't it? two seasons ago, it was Fellaini without shadow of a doubt. <laughs> um, you know, he, he got dressed in the dark every morning. <laughs> that man, I'm telling you. Um, currently, I, I'm not too sure. I, um, we've got lockers now. Years ago, at Belfield, <coughs> um, you had hangers and, and uh, pegs and stuff. So you know, you come in and everyone saw your clothes every day. So you could you could judge a lot more. I remember Mark Pembridge used to used to go around the dressing room and, and you know pick out who was the worst dressed that day and hang his hang his clothes up above the, the middle of the dressing room. But you know nowadays we have lockers and players can come in and put their clothes straight in the locker and you, you can't even tell half the time. Bainsey likes his clobber, doesn't he? Bainsey does like his clobber. Yeah, he's um, he, he he takes real pride in in what he wears. He. He, he seems to look smart as far as I can tell mm-hmm. um, but he's he's sort of into this music industry business and he, <laughs> he dresses a lot like the, uh, <laughs> the, the the people from all these bands I've got to say Coachy Club Luke Hutchinson the best prank you've pulled on a teammate I don't know to be honest um, I could tell you on it did yesterday but it wasn't to a teammate it was to the, the Babby D Mark Rowan <laughs> <laughs> who's um, <laughs> who's you know part of the media staff? We were at um, Radio City in the morning, <coughs> and he asked me to give him a lift back to Goodison, um, and I told him, "Yeah, sure, get in." Um, and I, for the first three or four minutes, I kept up pretending I didn't know where I was going and I was taking the wrong way. And it wasn't until we were in the car for fifteen minutes he realised I was taking him nowhere near Goodison. <laughs> <laughs> and I took him all the way to Finch Farm, and he was not happy. Let me tell you. <laughs> His car, his keys, his <laughs> laptop, his coat, everything was still at Goodison Park. Uh, Joanne, who has been the most influential player or influential person of your career? Um, <clears throat> person has got to be, well, I'd say people has got to be my parents. Um, you know, they've they've done a real uh, uh, load for me as a kid, you know, made sure I never missed any training or always there to take me, they've always supported me. Um, even now through my career they don't really miss a game um, and they're always there if I need them need them to chat obviously my wife um, is a big part of that now but um, you know I'd have to I'd have to stay with my parents Is Sunday as much for your family as it is for you? Is that a question or is that your question? That's my question oh. I'll have a go <laughs> if you don't mind um, I certainly hope they enjoy it the kids are really excited but my eldest is really excited um, you know and I think I hope my me, me family enjoy it. Um, I'll be certainly um, enjoying it once 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 the game starts and once everything's um, underway. Uh, but yeah, I hope my family will enjoy it as well. I'm sure they will. Don't forget the hashtag is Ask Aussie. Ask Aussie. We'll be here for another 15 minutes or so. Roberto's Alley. Well, that's a real name. Uh, what's the favourite away ground you've ever played at? Um, be a few, won't there? Yeah, um, <coughs> there's, there's a, there is a few. I, I, I enjoyed playing at um, Man City's new ground. Enjoyed playing at the Emirates. St James's Park's good. Villa Park's always been good to me. Mm. But I made my debut at um, at White Hart Lane, and I must admit, I do, I do enjoy going back there. You know, it brings back memories. It's also a nice stadium, and you know they, they've got a, a decent atmosphere down there. And you know, as you know, no matter where we go, we've always got a, a full end of the stadium. So. Um, I, I do enjoy going back to, back down there. It's a proper football ground, isn't it? <coughs> Tracy is asking, where do you think Everton will finish in the Premier League next season? Are you want for certain targets? 
Um, <clears throat> well, the aim has got to be top. You know, going into the season, you've got to you've got to start the season aim, aiming as high as you possibly can. Um, so, so that's got to be the aim. You know, we've, we're strengthening to, to try and accomplish things like that. You know, but other teams are strengthening as well. So, um, we'll be certainly aiming for the stars and and seeing how close we can get. Kev Lachlan asks, <coughs> do you have any plans for when you have to hang up your boots? Well, I'm not planning to hang them up soon. <laughs> so, um, something I'm, you need I'm, to think about, though, isn't it? I suppose once you reach yeah. thirty as a professional footballer. Yeah, it does. Which was only yesterday. Yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've, I've been trying a little bit. You know, I've tried little bits with the media. I've, I've started my coaching. I've got my first coaching badge. Um, you know, stored away now. So, um, you know, it's it's something you, you try and look to, towards and make sure you're not caught out with. Um, you know, when it happens, that you're not prepared for anything. But um, you know, at the minute, I'm just testing the water with them all. I'm not really. Um, ready to jump into anything yet. You've got a few irons in the fire though, haven't you? As you say, you've, you've started on, down the road of one or two options. Tony Kibble uh, is asking, <coughs> has Roberto Martinez improved your game at all, even after all your time in the game as a professional? Definitely. I think um, not only new managers coming in, but any new player um, improves my game. Um, you know, I always try to, I'm always trying to learn in football and, and pick up new ways now. Any new player that comes in, if they've got a new trick or a new style of play, I will always try and, you know, take the good bits and, and, and you know take them on myself. And um, you know that's obviously, you know, more than doubled massively for for, for for what the manager brings. You know, for his style of play, his um, his technical um, and tactical awareness. And I try and try and make sure I've I've got a clear understanding of all of it. And, you know, if if you can do that, and you know you're intelligent enough to try and take it all on, you you'll become a better player, and you know hopefully I am be, becoming. We've just been discussing possible post-playing <coughs> career options. Here's <laughs> certainly one from Phil Povey. Would you ever do Strictly Come Dancing? Um, I do feel I've got the dance moves um, for it, but I can't see me ever going on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> My dance moves are restricted to parties <laughs> and and family gatherings only. <laughs> um, so I can't see me going on. I'm you could do dancing. dancing. Who knows? On ice. You could do dancing on ice, couldn't you? Well, you think I dance like that? Anyway? It actually wouldn't make any difference <laughs> to you. You do them both in shoes. Uh, Greg E, what's Bainsey like at playing the guitar? Is he good, or does he just carry the guitar around for effect? <laughs> he took it all the way to Brazil, didn't he? He took it everywhere. Um, he takes it to. It's quite a few away games now, and and sits in his in his room, um, trying to improve on it, which is which is was great for him. You know, he's. He's passing the time, keeping his mind occupied, and doing something he likes. And you know, I was surprised that he that he can play a tune or two when when I first really? was, yeah when I first. So he's not bad. No, he can play a tune or two, and obviously he's always trying to. You, you need to practice even when you get good. You need to practice, but uh, yeah, he, he can play a tune or two. Perhaps we'll get him live on Twitter to belt out a couple of classics for us. Zoe Evans, <laughs> what do you think about Ross Barkley's new contract extension? I think it's great. It's great news for for the club, um, for our for our future. You know, we're keeping a, a talented uh, man like Ross Barkley committed committed to the committed to the club, and you know, it's great that that he's he's happy to do that. He sees where the or he, he's got the same idea of where the club's going to be in the next few years as, as we all have. Um, and um, you know, it's it's good that that we can we can get these young players to come into our club, and you know. We're showing the clear ambition for our future. Neil C, who was the hardest person to get the ball off in training? Oh, um, that's a good one. That um, skill-wise, oh, McGeady and, and Pina are, are very difficult to. If they're running at you, they're probably getting me anyway. They're getting past me. You know, there's not <laughs> much I can do there. Um, but with regards to, there's a couple that literally you can't get round. You know, just for just for strength. Uh, you know, Ron Ron was up there for that. Um, you know, being able to keep the ball. It doesn't matter where I try and, and get round him. You know, if, <laughs> if he doesn't want me to get the ball, <laughs> the ball. Sylvan must be tough to get round. He is, but um, you know, he's got two right feet, Sylvan. So I said, <laughs> don't tell him. I said, don't repeat that. No, Sylvan's uh, Sylvan's good um, and, and very strong. And um, Tommy Gravison was was good in training, wasn't he? He was. He was fantastic. Um, he was better in training than he than he was in game. Um, you know, 
sometimes you, you feel comfortable enough to try um, anything in training and he was so accomplished skill wise that anything he tried in training would usually come off and you know he did he transferred a lot of that to the first team into games he really did but he was even better at it in training we're going to take a few more questions we've got five minutes or so here with Leon Osmond so get your last few questions in the hashtag don't forget is ask Aussie hashtag is ask Aussie <coughs> Brad Baston, who is the best player you've played against in your career so far? Um, I think when you when you do that, you don't tend to look at who who you've had a good game against. You look at the greats and see if you've mm. played against them. Um, so I'd have to say it's got to be someone like Henri mm. or um, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, or or, or someone of uh, of that nature. Uh, you know, world. World class players. He played against. Did you play against Perlo? Juventus last year. I did. Year? Yeah, he was. Um, he was great to watch. He was. He was just so calm on the ball, and you know, I don't <coughs> think I've seen him get out of a jog around no. the pitch yet. He just looked. He just looked different class, you know. So missed his penalty though, didn't he? He did. You know, the, the, there was there was two big players missed their penalties that day. Me and me and Perlo. <laughs> you know, we both missed our pens. Um, but, you know, it just shows it happens to the best of us. Absolutely, that <laughs> absolutely. I don't recall missing many when I played. Um, Everton Pictures are asking, what was the best atmosphere at Goodison that you've played in? Um, there's been some great ones. There's, I remember Man United um, at home when Dunk scored the winner yeah, years course, ago. That yeah. was incredible. Fiorentina um, that night when we played them, it was it was unbelievable that night. Um, I remember when when Dan Goslin scored that night in the derby. Once that goal went in, yeah. it was Incredible, it, it was unmatched. But I, I'm going to name something that not not many people will, might remember. But it was the quarter final victory against uh, Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Right. And things were really tense at half time, um, and we come out and you know scored two goals to to win the game. And from the hour mark when we went two one up till after the end of the game, the atmosphere, you know, Everton fans. Realising mm. we were on our way to the semi-final at Wembley for the first time in years, um, you know, I, that actually sticks out in my head as being a, a really, a really good atmosphere. That the day. atmosphere around County Road as well was fantastic <laughs> after the game. For, Wouldn't know that, that for a good <laughs> few hours, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> right, we've got about half a dozen questions left to take here, so we'll uh, we'll get through some quick fire answers. Anthony Stafford, do you look at pictures of your England debut and think, why did they grow that moustache? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> No, because it was, it was a good cause. It was something the team was doing. I didn't think, I, I never seriously considered shaving it off. It was a commitment I'd made, and um, you know, if people, myself included, look back at that picture now, you realise I might have looked a bit of a wally, but you know, there was <laughs> there was a reason for it. I mean, um, funny enough, my mum was getting a couple of things ready for the testimonial, and she was going through old pictures and stuff, and she pulled out a picture of me in an England tracksuit with my dad and. Uh, my brother and my son after the game with me moustache and I was just looking at it thinking oh no <laughs> it was all it was a good cause, good cause it was and just untimely yeah, wasn't it it was but you know these things happen but you know I'll, only you could I'll get your debut call yeah. in November yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ok a few quick answers Matthew Stock Cube Stock who, com who commands the music in the dressing room um, Darren Gibson I'd say yeah. in, the, on the, in the dressing room on the bus you know in the dressing room we, we usually have actually a sort of like a set playlist you can go and add to it or take it away but we have someone um, you know from the technical side that, that looks after that and we, so we don't really get involved but if we're on the bus or <coughs> we're in we're somewhere else where you know we need someone to, to sort the music out and Darren Gibson's usually the man who steps up he, he sits there with his head looking for the next song <laughs> as the current <laughs> one's playing and he puts some good songs on to be honest OK, we've got five questions to go here and we will get you the, all the ticket information that you need ahead of the game on Sunday before we leave you this afternoon. Andy Dunn, what part of your regime, fitness or otherwise, has kept you at the top of your game? You seem to get better every season. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, That's from your cousin. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I always try and make sure I'm, I'm as fit as I can. I, I, you try and strengthen... Uh, constantly try and do your leg weights to, to, to keep up but you know I think excuse me if you are saying I'm, I'm getting better receiving it I'm learning more mm -hmm. you know that's that's what's making me you know 
um, stay stay uh, in the in the first team and around the club. I'm, you can never think you've cracked it, can you? I don't suppose. No, and you've always got to want and need to stay. Um, you know, stay at your best to, to stay in the team. And um, for me, that meant constantly learning and um, you know trying to pick up new things off players and manager alike. And you know that's that's what's been that's what's been working for me. Ralph Berg wants to know who's the funniest guy in the squad. Current, current funniest squad. guy is, in my opinion, Leighton Baines. Mm. Um, you know, he sometimes will will tell a story that's funny, but mostly it's it's, it's just one-liners and um, you <laughs> and know gets away with picking him, the he? right moment to say something. And he, he not only does he get away with it, he just has everyone in stitches <laughs> sometimes. And he can be very dry and serious at times. And and I think that's why he can be so funny because you know he, he can surprise you with a. Um, with a with a funny line or a funny comment, and you know he, he cracks me up certainly. George Wood, I don't think that's the goalkeeper we had in the uh, late nineteen seventies. Could be, you never know. What's your favourite derby moment? Um, your goal? Yeah, I was going to say my my favourite moment was was scoring at the the Gladys Street end against Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you that's what you want when you when you're growing up to score to score in the derby at the, at the Gladys Street end. It took a while coming, didn't it? Did um, you know? It, it took a, a, a real while coming, <laughs> but it was worth waiting for. You know, mm-hmm. to get that feeling of um, you know to, to score against Liverpool and Derby. We've we've had some good victories. I remember the moment um, Gosling's goal went in. I remember the moment Carsley's goal went in because they were both winning goals to win the mm-hmm. game. Um, but Your goal got us back into the game, though, didn't it? Because if we go in two 0 down at half time, we're probably not. Well, and we we were dominating the game, and it was mm-hmm. just, it was a surprise that we were. Um, that we were two 0 down, two quick, quick goals from, from you know who, and you know we, mm-hmm. we we were surprisingly two 0 down, but it was it was important to get a goal back, and I'm, I'm made up, I, I got one. Well, the biggest game of your career is Sunday against FC Porto, and Nath Recourt is asking why did we choose Porto for the game? Oh, um, availability, I think. <laughs> and the quality. Was, um, yeah, we, we we looked around for. Um, some some top class opposition. You know nowadays you um, to get top class opposition. Um, you know with with our lower league starting starting quite early um, a few weeks before the Premier League season. Uh, you have to look abroad, and um, you know we looked at some top teams abroad to see if any of them were available. And and you know FC Porto were one of the top two teams in in Portugal in in in, qualif- in the Champions League this season. And um, you know they were available to. To come over and play us, and you know we wanted a we wanted a top opposition and, and a real test, and you know they'll definitely give us that. The manager must be pleased with the quality of the opposition. He is. He's, he's mentioned it a few times. He's um, you know made us all aware that it's it's not a it, it is a testimonial, but it's it's a real competitive fixture, and mm. um, you know they'll be bringing a lot to um, you know all, all their, their their players are back now, and they'll be bringing them bringing them to Goodison Park for us to to get a look at, and you know to get a look at what it's going to be like to be playing these. These European opposition teams this year. It's Everton versus FC Porto here at Goodison Park on Sunday afternoon at four o'clock. Tickets are selling well, but you can still get yours by visiting EvertonFC.com or you can telephone 0871 663 1878 or you can just drop in at the Park End box office here at Goodison Park. Alternatively, you can visit the city centre outlets Everton 2 in Liverpool 1 or the ticket quarter in Queen Square. Tickets are just £20 for adults, £10 for juniors and over 65. Thanks very much indeed for listening to our inane drivel here this afternoon. Myself and Leon Osmond, the full Q&A will be available to watch back on our YouTube channel and also very shortly on EvertonFC.com. You can also revisit Aussie's answers by checking out our official Twitter feed at Everton. You don't need me to tell you how much Leon Osmond's done for Everton Football Club. If anybody deserves a bumper attendance on Sunday, it's him. It's Everton versus Porto on Sunday at 4 o'clock. Thanks for joining us.